Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. As you can see, I have the ED80T set up on the HEQ5 Skywatcher mount, and I am ready to do some imaging tonight. Tonight I'm going to focus on everyone's favorite star cluster, M45, the Pleiades. Stick around, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this object, and then I'll show you how I captured it and processed it. Okay, let me take just a couple of moments and tell you a little bit about M45 or the Pleiades. This is one of the most familiar star clusters in the night sky. Probably if you're watching this channel, you're already very familiar with it. But just in case, let me uh, give you a little bit of background on it. You can see here we're looking towards the east in Stellarium. Here is the constellation Orion. And if we uh, find Orion's belt and then go north, Basically, start looking up and a little bit to the left, we're going to find Aldebaran. And then if we continue to travel directly upwards from Aldebaran, we're going to see this very um, startling image in the night sky. Every, anytime you look at the Pleiades, you immediately know you're looking at something different, even with a naked eye view. The Pleiades stands out. It will be a bright patch. If you get a set of binoculars, you're going to be able to see the stars that make up the cluster. And because they have such a unique shape and are so close together, they have a very haunting look. In fact, the longer you look at it through a pair of binoculars, the more stars you'll be able to see. Then if you go the next step and look through a telescope um, with a camera, you begin to see this nebulosity that's around there. And uh, so the Pleiades were, were very famous in Greek mythology. The Pleiades are the daughters of Atlas and Pleione. You can see Atlas and Pleione down here. The seven sisters had been harassed by Orion. Orion was chasing them. And so Zeus transformed the sisters into doves, cast them into heavens, and of course Orion is still pursuing them, and here they are immortalized for us. These, um, uh, this, these particular stars, this particular cluster, was well known in the ancient world. In fact, if you go back and you do a little bit of research, you'll find that just about every culture in that day and age had some sort of myth attached to this star cluster. In fact, um, it, uh, this is also known as uh, Subaru, and this is where we get the, um, uh, the uh, logo for Subaru cars is based on the Pleiades, and, which I thought was kind of interesting. All right. Uh, again, you can see it's an open star cluster. It's located actually in the constellation Taurus. Um, what's neat about this is it's made up of hot blue luminous stars. These stars were all born right around the same time, um, and they are traveling together. Currently, they're about 430 light years from us, and they're traveling together at about 25 miles per second. Now, they are slightly spreading out, so in, after a long, 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 long period of time, these stars will move away from each other, and they will move out, and, and you'll no longer see this cluster the way it is today. But um, today, it, it makes a very startling image. Now, the, neb the nebulosity, this blue nebulosity that's around these stars, um, for years, uh, astronomers thought that this was l the leftover material from the formation of these stars. Today, however, most astronomers believe that it's actually unrelated, that these stars are either passing through or behind this area of gas. And it just happens that from our vantage point, uh, that gas is between us and these stars, and they make this very, very startling very unique image. All right, let's take a couple of minutes. I'm going to show you a little bit of how I captured the panels that make up this mosaic. You'll notice here that 
the 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 actual cluster this larger cluster doesn't quite fit in to my camera's field of view so what i ended up doing was going over to carte du seal and planning a four panel mosaic so i'm going to show you how i captured each one of those panels and then how I put them together and then we'll take a look at the final image. Plus stick around, I'm gonna show you a couple of other uh, star clusters that I have recently taken pictures of. Um, so they'll be at the end of the video, all right? So let's, uh, let's take a look at how I captured this. Okay, we'll take just a couple of seconds here and I'll show you what I've co collected so far. Um, this is, um, I've already taken 25 images and then um, in, a fir in my first imaging plan, and I've done five more to round it up to 30. That'll be two hours worth of total um, integration on this panel. This is the first panel to show you where I'm shooting at right now here. If I zoom in, you can see here are the Pleiades, this white box right here is the panel that I'm shooting right now. And I'm going to shoot a total of four panels that I've laid out for this. Um, and like I said, I'm going to do uh, 30 images or 30 uh, subframes for each panel, which will be two hours per panel, eight hours for the whole project. So things are going pretty good right now. Um, I'm getting ready here in just a second to move over to the second uh, panel. Um, I'm only going to be able to shoot for about maybe 40 minutes or so. Then I'll have to do the Meridian flip and uh, finish up the two hours on it. But uh, things are going pretty good so far. Now, I've got the moon coming up now, and I'm hoping that's not going to mess me up. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, I thought I'd take just a quick second here, and um, we'll take a look at the first frame coming up here in just a couple of seconds um, on the second frame and I'll show you where that's at um, the first frame was over on this side of the Pleiades now you can see where my white box is this is what I'm shooting right now so that includes um, Alcyon um, it's just to the to the uh, uh, side there Pleione Pleione is in the previous image and here's Atlas so you can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at Here's the first of these frames. Let's see what it looks like when it comes up. Okay. Um, looks pretty good. Uh, looks pretty good. If I get my uh, magnifier out here just a little bit, I'm going to go in on some of these smaller stars and look at them. Um, things look, they look pretty round. They look pretty good. Um, so uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Where I'm going to shoot... Um, a uh, total of uh, 30 of this frame, another two hours on this frame. Um, you can see I'm about 47 minutes right now from needing to do the Meridian flip. And so I'll be back out in a little while and uh, I'll do the Meridian flip, finish off this frame, and then we'll come back and look at the third frame when I'm getting ready to start on it. Okay, it's about 12.30 now in the morning, and uh, I'm starting on the third panel of this four-panel uh, mosaic of the um, Pleiades. I may end up adding some more panels to this a little bit later on to try to pick up some of this other uh, nebulosity out here, but we'll see how it comes out. It's going to pick up the main cluster of stars with what I've got set up. Uh, you can see here, I'm just finishing up the first image on this third panel. So we'll take a look and see what it looks like here real quick. It's gonna be coming up here in just a few seconds. Let's see what it looks like here when it comes up. There we go. And you see a little bit of the nebulosity here on the raw picture. Of course, it'll come out a lot better uh, once I do, once I stack uh, all of these. Like I said, I'm stacking about two hours worth of um, uh, subs on each one of these panels. So it'll be total integration time of eight hours for the entire 
uh, Pleiades, but uh, two hours per panel. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and shoot the last, uh, this panel and the next, and then we'll start processing. Okay, I'm going to walk through real quick just the basics of how I put this mosaic together and produce the final picture. Um, when you shoot a mosaic, what you want to do is shoot each panel um, and then stack it separately. So I have, um, I took all of the uh, subs from frame or for panel number one, I stacked them together in Astro Pixel Processor, and this is the image that I got. And then I did that for um, number two for frame or for panel number two, three, and then four. And then what you want to do is you want to come back in and take each one of those stacked panels, load them into Astro Pixel Processor. And uh, basically, you're just going to make a couple of quick changes. I'll show you what you do. You come over here to register. You want to set your scale stop to at least 10. Turn off flip descriptors and, and XY. Turn on the use dynamic distortion correction. Turn off the same camera and optics. And then um, I, I on analyze stars. Also, I, I, I move that up to 5,000. On register, you have to make sure that you have registration mode as mosaic, by the way. Then in integration, all I do is I uh, turn my um, local normalization correction. What works best for me is first degree LNC with six iterations. Uh, you'll have to experiment with that to see what works best for you. And then I enable the multiband blending uh, to 20%. And once I do, I, that, uh, I click on integrate, and that is going to give me this image right here. Okay, so here you can see all of the uh, four panels stacked together, or stitched together rather, and to make up the total mosaic. What I'm going to do to uh, in Astro Pixel Processor, I'm gonna go over here to uh, the tool section, and I'm gonna use the light, remove light pollution which basically means you're going to draw some boxes in here uh, around the edges and get those gradients out. I have a lot of gradient in here because I shot on a bright full moon. If you need more information about that, I've made lots of previous videos about how to do mosaics and process images in Astro Pixel Processor. So you can take a look at that. I'm not going to take time here uh, to do that. Then I cropped this image down. Once I cropped it, then I took it over to Photoshop. This is the final image. In Photoshop, basically what I ended up doing was doing a little bit of noise reduction, a little bit of color balancing, and then just try to um, brighten up the, uh, the, the colors in the stars. And this is the final picture that I've got of the Pleiades. A couple things that I noticed, I probably need a little bit more integration time. So probably what I'll do is go back in and add at least another hour to two hours on each of the panels in order to try to get a little bit more of this nebulosity to come out. But you can see this came out pretty good. The, uh, there's a second thing I would notice. I'm kind of off-centered here. I didn't really do a good job you'll notice here, of planning my mosaic, I need to add in probably one or two more panels over on this side so that I can kind of clip this out and get a little bit better framing uh, of the final image. But that's what you do in astrophotography. You you do it, you, you learn from it, you add to your knowledge, um, and you can always go back in and add more data. So that's what I'm going to do on this picture is add a couple of more frames um, and then I'm going, or panels rather, and then I'm going to add a little bit more data so that I can get a little bit pick, better picture. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied with this. I hope that you enjoyed this, maybe learned something out of it. Stick around. I'm going to put this final picture up there so you can look at it a little bit better. And I've also got two other star clusters that I've just recently shot. One is Caroline's um, cluster, which is a pretty large open cluster. And then I want to show you also a final picture that I did of Messier 15, which is a globular cluster. And so stick around. You'll see those final pictures. Um, if you enjoyed this, please take a moment to like, subscribe, 
and share this video with your friends to help me build my channel. I'm really trying to get some new viewers, some new subscribers, and I hope you'll help me out. Thanks for tuning in. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.